good morning students welcome back to lecture 12 uh, xenotransplantation and immunosuppression uh, so this will be the end chapter for unit 3 where it talks more about transplantation biology a quite interesting concept and also quite uh, functionally challenging and important concept because it's dealing with uh, human lives and also it deals with uh, challenging aspects of applying human uh, scientific knowledge advanced technologies surgical technologies so that we can um, uh, obtain greater success in transplantations so we will see little bit more detail and as suggested uh, xenotransplantation and immunosuppression we will we have already briefly discussed about these phenomena i will explain again then we will go in details of each of the step again in this class so coming on to organ transplantation it's one of the important aspect of uh, human biology and uh, uh, medicine in term per se we have seen in the last class that which tissues and organs can be used for transplantation and a lot of tissues for example from skin intestine to the kidney that can be transplanted uh, depending on the condition of the patient and the necessity and if you look on the global trends of transplantation so we are looking right transplantation is biology but a cross talk between donor and recipient cells and then if you look in terms of human population where we use allografts right a transplant graft going from human to human is called allograft it's allograft and uh, transplantation that uh, in terms of the giving in terms of condition you see in the graph here the number of people who require the transplants and the year from 1991 we are progressing towards uh, this data is still 2013 by that timeline you see that the cases have been who are requesting or who are in demand of organs having a specific disease condition exponentially increased you see the graph here the light gray one but at the same time the available transplant either kidney liver or lung it may be diverse transplants available for the patients or recipients given the choice of that given the look in the array of the available organs from the donors given already the huge dip you have only 28000 of variety of organs but you have diverse aspects of here in the recipients and in terms of here the organs can come from one donor multiple organs can come if i say uh, is organ donor as a choice he made and the, the organ the person died of accident you can recover more than one organ from the body so basically the number increases from here the donors available here with this so basically these two are not exponentially increasing there is a exponential increase in the demand for organs huge dip so basically it puts a lot of question marks as a humans as a society as a scientific community we are working on so should we consistently go up or should we consistently go into further uh, 10 to 20 more years increase this graph exponentially and again make it the gap as huge as possible that's the way science has to work in a society no absolutely not we are diligently working as a group of educators scientists surgeons uh, healthcare professionals we are trying to reduce this dip as much as possible increase this a one way or other way so that we meet the demand of organ transplantation so that a uh, vast amount of uh, human life can be saved that is the motto of any scientific process any scientific discovery so how people were trying to look from this earlier transplantation pioneering transplantation studies a little bit progress have been done here but still further progress have been uh, done in terms of not only allograft in terms of another process called xenograft xeno transplantation so what they specifically use that yes the donors for humans are not available the organs are less why don't we go into other systems or other species which are most similar to humans and use the necessity organs from the other species and then try to transplant them into humans make it a successful transplantation less graft rejection so that came the boon of xenograft so it's allograft human to human this is xenograft here xenograft is a tissue transferred between different species per se graft of the baboon heart into human because human the species interspecies because of significant shortages in donated organs raising animals for the specific purpose of serving as organ donors for humans is under serious consideration given the timeline it's almost a research that developing into in a fast paced in over 
a decade or so, 10 years, five to 10 years only. This is a very novel research area. It's expanding given the techniques available. And if you are really interested in a kind of uh, pursue your PhD and further research, just look in terms of immunology that was interesting to you. This concept may fetch you a lot of uh, positiveness in your career if you move forward. So xenotransplantation, looking from species, for example, baboons, or per se pig cells. So that's what, as I said, xenotransplantation, uh, it's been uh, doing the organs from other species, pig to organ donors, pig to humans. And it, uh, initially when people were talking about this, everyone is thinking like it's just like a science fiction or it's happening in a movie. It may not happen or it may happen uh, with uh, difficulty posing a lot of challenges, but we are coming into a greener area here. The challenges have been reduced by dedication. We are uh, getting a promising uh, features on this. We will see in that. So coming on to fundamentals again, our basic slides looking for a graft from the donor, host, recipient, different colors. In the present case, you're not looking for allograft, you're looking for a xenograft. So the species is basically, you're looking for a graft coming from the pigs. So basically the pigs come here and then our immune system or the human immune system, it will not keep calm, right? If what is the reaction for the xenograft from the pig comes, what the immune system of the host it responds? We already know that. Uh, it will respond in a way to kill the pig cells also. So that's a basically a foreign cell you're looking here. But on the other hand, if you are bringing the graft in two conditions, you're bringing as a live or dead tissue from the pig. Live tissue or dead tissue, how it responds the immune system. If you're bringing a live pig tissue, it may probably bring live uh, immune cells from the pig. Then the immune cells from the pig, given the species, uh, interspecies difference in terms of phylogenetically, we are too far from pigs. I'm basically saying that we are a bit different from pigs compared to human to human. So the foreignness between human to human in terms of HLA polymorphism is shorter compared to the highly distinct species of uh, immune cells or some other chemicals coming from the pig. So basically there is a higher degree of foreignness that leads to stronger immune response that will be for the xenograft it will be stronger than allograms. So basically our system will be shocked to see the pig cells coming into the body. It basically elicits a strong immune response per se. If you are saying about strong immune response, we are talking about uh, acquired immunity. Within the acquired immunity, humoral and cell mediated, you are talking about mainly the cell mediated is highly potent in that say, cell T cytotoxic or T helper cell response, which is a highly potent response in the immune system. So it may elicit that immediate strong response only kill the pig. So you're talking about live. Let's say you're bringing about a dead pig tissue into the humans. So in that case, the cells are dead here in the pig. You put it in humans. Uh, it's uh, actually, it's a foreign tissue per se, but at the same time, uh, the tissue has been dead. So you may not expect some immune cells coming from that uh, donor. So you may expect no or minimal immune response from the host. Why I'm talking about dead tissue here? Because it's been in the pioneering study, it was shown that humans uh, heart transplantation process, there is a connective tissue in the, because if you take a cross section of the uh, human uh, heart, it's uh, nothing but connective tissue with the tubes, excuse me, tubes and walls connected by a smooth connective tissue, taken the basic uh, cellular aspects. So they were able to see that the pig will also have a similar wall that is similar to humans. So if you're looking in the heart, the wall is just like a tube. If it is a dead or alive, it doesn't matter. It needs to help to make a passage. So it, uh, if a dead wall from the pig also helps uh, to sustain the heart in the humans during heart transplantation. So people use a dead tissue from the uh, pig and put it here as a stunt and replace it. And as the tissue is dead, there is no immune response. The connective tissue remains same and the heart was not marking normally in the patient. So that's in terms of the dead tissue coming from the pig. But let's say, but live tissue comes from the pig. We already said strong response will come. Then how do you go, we go with? We are saying that we want to use pig organs to control uh, the reduction in the availability organs. At the same time, you are posing that pigs are highly non-foreign where the immune system is going to kill. Then where is the solution? 
There is a solution for that. The solution is the phenomena called immunosuppression. One of the aspects is immunosuppression. Okay, you give the pig cells, but at the same time, you use some chemicals or drugs or you use a way to either kill the immune system of the host, basically, to suppress the own uh, endogenous or own immune cell using some chemicals so that no response will come. The pig cells graft can sustain and it can engraft to the host tissue and it can uh, give a successful transplantation by not eliciting graft rejection. So that process is called immunosuppression. So we will see that what is the phenomena people use it in this process from the pig. All other way, other aspects is that why don't we go into a kind of harmony? Why we should hate the pig so much? Can we mimic or can we tune uh, our own immune cells or human immune cells not to dislike in terms of the, per se the pig cells? Don't need to recognize them as foreign. Make them as a, a self a molecule or self human molecule is a way, there is a way in terms of saying that conditioning. Conditioning the host immune system to like the pig immune cells rather than dislike that. Yes, we can do that. There is a a kind of techniques we can say in terms of this phenomena is called making tolerant for the host immune system to the graft immune system through a phenomenon of immunotolerance. Immunotolerance is nothing but you expose the pig cells in a different form where the human system likes it. At the same time, you give a, uh, enough time for engraftment that, that some pig cells may come up and both pig and blue and pig cells can live in harmony in the host, so engraftment happens. That is called immunotolerance. So what techniques we can use for this is nothing but the boon of biotechnology. You can use a genetically modified uh, genetic engineering techniques. You can modify this coming from the graft, from the pig, modify the structure or modify the genes. You make them in a way that more similar to the humans or less disliked by the humans. Through genetic engineering, you can use that. You can enhance immunotolerance. We will see that also, what are the tools available, how we can see into that. So that brings a summary in terms of the fundamentals of what is immunotolerance, what is immunosuppression, why uh, a foreign graft coming from a pig can be elicit high immune response, and then how you can use it as immunosuppression. So briefly, we will look into a little bit of little bit of terminology here because you might need it to better understand xenotransplantation. Uh, I will briefly go up and then again you make notes for these abbreviations because some of them are not necessary, but some of them are really important. So I highlighted here in terms of the blue, we are talking in terms of the humans, of the host as a, as a recipient. We already seen that there will be a response of acute vascular rejection, no vascularization given hyperacute response of transplant rejection. We have seen complement regulatory protein or complement uh, responses coming from antibody antigen. We have seen hyperacute reject, uh, rejection. We have seen interleukins. These are the molecules. Key helper cells will help into expansion of this uh, rejection process or uh, make the immune cells highly active for this. The first uh, uh, chemical molecule is interleukin. We have seen that. Natural killer cell, the components that help in that uh, antigen presenting cell. We have seen tumor necrosing factor along with a partner with interleukins. They will also help in graft rejection and leaving humans working as together to improve the transplantation, World Health Organization, and few other aspects of uh, humans can be discussed here. But look in the blue in terms of the host or recipient, what are the molecules that can be elicited for immune transplant response. Now you flip it inside of in terms of the peak or other foreign species. The abbreviation in the dark here that constitutes the donor cells. You look in one aspect is called alpha gal, the gal alpha 1 3, gal beta R. This is nothing but a sugar molecule that basically present on the endothelial cells of porcine, porcine, or porcine. It's a pig, pig endothelial cell. It has a stronger uh, pro, uh, sugar molecule, uh, highly uh, predominant sugar molecule present in the cells. And this sugar molecule is completely recognized by humans as a highly potent and a foreign dangerous molecule. That's why when you give a pig cell to humans, this sugar molecule elicits an interaction of in the immune cells, high response will be coming. This one of the sugar molecule or some proteins are also there. 
So that's one more time from pig side, pig endothelial cells, and also pig sometimes carries some endogenous retroviruses because it's an animal. It may, it can host some viruses. They will also dangerous to the humans during transplantation. As such, human immune system, pig immune system also carries tumor necrosis factor is common to both. They may fight each other given a graft rejection or given a GVHD, one will be dominant. So now you looked at the abbreviation or concepts in terms of the pig side. The blue is human side. You look in both here in different colors. But what about these black ones? It's nothing but some of the concepts are in terms of genetic engineering. Genetic engineering are tumor suppressive mechanism or tools that can help you to go away with this distinction of the blue and red color. When the green highlights here, it is technique CRISPR-Cas9 or gene knockout technique, AO knockouts, or it's a consortium, uh, for example, for transplantation. So again, human body. So if you have all these together, work together in the consortium and humans, basically you can take the distinction from pig to human and make these all pathways disappear, all the cell distinction disappear. It becomes common by doing so. They will be basically recognized as self and by using genetic technology, you can do that self recognition. So this, uh, what is it, these genetic technologies? Briefly, we will go and look into that. So coming on to again, little bit more recap. Transplantation is one of the most challenging and complex areas of modern medicine. One of the major obstacle is transplant rejection non-self molecule, uh, the risk can be reduced by immunosuppressive drugs, but it will be not eliminated. So we will see that. And again, the concept of cross species, pig to human transplantation is known as xenotransplantation, xenografts. And uh, it usually pig has been chosen as a model. We will see that why. But in the first studies carried out of xenotransplantation, people were using chimpanzee herd. There was some success in these years, but at the same time, highest graft rejection was observed. Uh, whatever immunosuppressive drugs, given that time, given that timeline, given at the chemical uh, molecule availability, it was unable to suppress the immune response and the transplantation was a failure at that time. So, <clears throat> so that's what, as discussed, immune response to xenograft is most extreme than seen in allograft, human to human transplantation. So basically certain uh, molecules called sugars and proteins present in the pig surface, they don't have in the human, highly dissimilar, for example, this alpha gal, that will elicit a stronger response. So how we can uh, make it tolerant? So making xenotransplantation a reality, because it is a uh, necessity, it is a necessity to save human lives, how we can make the reality? Scientists were using tolerance mechanism, they were using genetic engineering approaches, basically saying that, Let's make pig not pig, let's make it pig. Saying that humanized pig, genetically modified pig that will produce humans organs or human cells so that when they're transplanted into humans, they're not foreign, they will be recognized as self and the graft will be allowed to survive in that. That's through genetic engineering. Basically saying that in 2002, scientists reported the generation of first cloned pig where that alpha beta sugar has been uh, gone from the system of the pig, lacking a sugar molecule through knocking out a genetic engineering sugar gene that coding for that. So that when given the transplant from the genetically modified pig, uh, they were able to see that a less immune response. So as suggested again, whatever you test, you don't need to test directly in the human. It may cause some other problem, lives will be lost. So basically you need to go into other primate models, some other models, uh, less human or ethically, you can use them to kill so that uh, scientifically the hypothesis can be tested. So they modified the gene modification uh, in terms of the pig for primate in terms of one of the baboon and they grown the baboon heart in the pig, removal, maintenance, and then transplantation and given to the treatment here. Initial treatment needs again, some assistance in terms of immunosuppression briefly, low blood sugar maintenance, and also cell proliferation. Blood clotting mechanism will be inherited. Per se, it, uh, we are thinking that it is genetically suitable to this uh, monkey from the pig, but we don't know the consequences. And after transplantation, some side effects may come. To reduce that, you pre-treat the monkey, you prepare the monkey to condition for immunosuppression drugs, 
and cell proliferation and blood clotting inhibition so that foreign immune cells will not grow in the skin. So the same mechanism, why only you uh, speaks to humans, uh, we can try to test in humans also, because that may be the necessity given the patient dying soon. So people also use the same uh, mechanism called not modifying genetically, but making the humans to be tolerant to the pigs, again using the same genetic humanized pig concept. So first, this is the donor you are looking, uh, recipient you are looking, Recipient bone marrow transplantation you are doing and you are doing the transplantation with the pig cells, humanized pig cells replaced from here to here. And first you need to do that. You need to precondition the human also to prepare for donor bone marrow. And you precondition with some chemicals and chemical or medical procedures. Then in parallel you grow that pig expressing human genes. You increase the population of pig kidneys in terms of pig bone marrow or per se humanized uh, pig kidney, humanized bone marrow, and then in the recipient, transplant them, both kidney and bone marrow. At a given time, proper engraftment, both the human cells, both the, because you are not using, using much of immunosuppression, very minimal immunosuppression. So after some time, the human cells will also grow, the humanized pig cells will also grow, they will grow in harmony, and normal uh, immune system develops. So basically you look here, mixed chimera will be formed, a healthy donor, a healthy recipient from a duration from here to here after transplantation. But pre-transplantation, you condition the recipient post-transplantation per se to decrease any side effects or be ready for consequences that are negative. You give a small dose of immunosuppression up to eight months. After that engraftment, all process looks fine then nothing needed, so immunosuppression will be not needed at all, no continuation of the drugs, because you continuously give the drugs, the drugs will have side effects. Sometimes it may lead to cancer also. We will see that further in immunosuppression. So you can use the tolerance mechanism, tune or fine tune or condition the recipient immune cells by injecting the humanized pig cells, immune cells from to the body, so that they communicate with each other they know the cells are in body types here and there is not much of foreignness, coexistence can happen. Using similar procedures, people were using several techniques to replace human organs. One of them is called esophageal atresia, where there is a gap in the human esophagus. It's really difficult. You have to use pipes to connect these and then uh, let the patient have a uh, food through the tract but it was replaced by growing these tubes in the pig cells or the pigs, growing them, growing these trachea tubes, and then treating them through a stem cell transplant procedure, making as uh, tolerant or suitable to humans, replace the gap as a pipe or plumbing. You can connect them and give a, a patient a normal life just as a normal human being. It's a groundbreaking science and a really uh, challenging science. Same way, you can use the pigs you can use different portions of the pigs, cornea, lung, kidney, heart, liver, and pancreas. You can transplant or you can grow them as a humanized uh, uh, organs and then transplant into humans also. And also if you look in terms of the in, uh, internal uh, lymphoid tissues or lymphoid system in the pig, and also in terms of the mice, they are not much different from humans. They have the spleen, they have bone marrow, they have thymus. Most lymph nodes, almost all common immune cells are there. But given the size of the organs inside the pig and inside the mice, this human heart uh, is very close in size to compare to pig heart. That's why uh, the choice for heart transplantation is uh, pig rather than mice, because mice heart is very small. You cannot use that in terms of size and proportion. You need to pump the blood, right? If it's a small heart, it will not, it will just explode. So, but uh, phenomenally, the heart uh, size in terms of humans and pigs are similar. Though uh, humans look larger, our internal body has limited size proportions of organs. So, that's the suitability in terms of that. That's why, in concluding xenotransplantation, within the past decade, over 10 years of research, a lot of research on xenotransplantation uh, provides uh, very positive clinical applications based on combination of genetically modified pigs using genetic engineering, enhancing tolerance protocol using stem cell transplant methods, preconditioning the recipient, and also effective immunosuppressive medication. A lot of uh, clinical trials have been happened, 
in terms of finding a suitable uh, immunosuppressive drug, enhance them, potent, highly potent. By doing so, the success of transplantation is going in terms of the greener pastures. Okay, so and we have less than some eight minutes of time. So that is xenotransplantation. We will now little bit go in terms of uh, briefly and uh, you can use stem cell transplant. For example, why do you want to go into xenograft again? Use a complicated method rather than genetically modify humans itself for HLA polymorphism and then make them more suitable or go in terms of stem cell transplant, transplant the stem cells from a donor or condition the stem cell from the donor to be suitable to the recipient. That was the science coming up. In few two slides, we will talk about stem cell transplantation. Then we go into immunosuppressive drugs in general and conclude the talk today. So stem cell transplant is nothing but you want to uh, have as much as uh, uh, immune cells coming from the donor, which are suitable to or uh, which are uh, non less self less non self to the recipient. So how do you let's say the donor? probably he has a limited amount of immune cells or blood per se. So if you are do using the donor to transplant in terms of blood transfusion or bone marrow transfusion, so your starting material is very low because he may have very few cells that are active, highly potent, are successfully grafted into the recipient system. Then uh, you are starting with a limitation from the beginning of the experiment itself and you are going from human to human transplantation, a low graft, so it may not be a good idea. So people have developed a chemicals called growth factors, which increase a specific growth of specific cells in the body. The growth factor will have a unique, uh, in terms of given the neurons, it is a unique combination, unique cocktail. Given the immune cells, they have a specific cocktail of growth factors. So specifically this uh, granulocyte colony stimulating factor, one of the growth factor, GCSF, it specifically enhances the cell cycle process of immune cells. If you're given this injection, the donor will have a high proportion of immune cells that are uh, propagating or they are going for cell division in a given a population. So by doing so, you increase the blood cells in the blood of the donor and that can be either used for chemotherapy. If the donor is going for chemotherapy, that is good for protecting him. Or if it's a transplanted, he is giving some transplantation you can use it for after or before stem cell transplant. So how the mechanism specifically works, given the colony stimulating factor, a specific phenomena happens, a proportion or in propagation of immune cells are specifically called uh, peripheral blood stem cells, increases in the donor, high population of T cells, NK cells, human uh, hematopoietic stem cell, B cell can be there in the donor from the beginning. And then later, you pre-treat the recipient for immunosuppression, same kind like baboon experiments, immunosuppressive recipient to prevent graft rejection, reduce number of tumor, tumor cell if he's going for chemotherapy, reduce number of recipient hematopoietic stem cell. So basically reducing the recipient own system are completely annihilating the immune cells in the recipient. So it's a green here, the green blood or whatever different components of the immune system of the recipient along with chemicals you give, replace that, and then make this donor ready with a high population of the PBSCs, and then transplant the donor cell through blood transfusion, given the time, given the time in terms of looking over the time in terms of days, the percentage of the grafts, donor cell engraftment increases, given this precondition, given the stem cell transplant, you're given the different colors here. The first one is recipient situation, later combination of chimera at the end eventually the donor immune system or the transplant takes over the recipient and given the timeline you don't see much of the donor completely replaced which are six cells here in terms of the recipient and then uh, the donor cells are replaced here with the healthy stem cells of the immune system so this is the phenomena of immuno in terms of stem cell transplant Okay, so briefly we will quickly go in terms of uh, immunosuppression. What are the chemicals? What are the, uh, what in terms of the biological process, where the chemical acts to suppress the immune system? The immunosuppressants are drugs or medicines that lower the body's ability to reject a transplanted organ are called immunosuppressants. 
they are sometimes called anti rejection drugs to graft rejection anti to the graft rejection two types of immunosuppressants are there induction drugs maintenance drugs induction drugs are highly powerful they given at the time of the transplant maintenance drugs are given at the over duration either one year two year or three years this is the first dose given high dose later you have to suppress the immune system whatever any consequences so you keep giving some drugs so that any rejection uh, graft rejection process uh, arising can be suppressed so coming on to the maintenance drugs there are many classes of the drugs are available some of them are main classes called calcineurin inhibitors anti proliferative agents mtor inhibitor and steroid molecule so given the name itself it tells that it is inhibiting specific calcineurin molecule in the immune system uh, wherever it is acting in the immune pathway and uh, anti proliferating means you are trying to not uh, proliferate the recipient immune system you don't want that so you may use some drugs to control cell cycle and the mtor inhibitor it's one of the tor pathway is highly uh, important uh, cross talk pathway happen in the immune system we will see in further so you can control that using an inhibitor for tor pathway or you can use some steroids so these drugs go in a specific process they control the immune response so basically one basic uh, understanding is that we know that immune system is complex lot of cross talk lot of uh, humoral and cross mediated cell mediated cross talks so there is lot of branching and network so if you want to suppress it you want to disconnect the connections here disconnect the connection between uh, b and t lymphocyte in terms of humoral and cell mediated within cell mediated uh, disconnect the connection between t helper cells in other pathways or disconnect the connection between uh, macrophages to the t cells whatever they communicate if you do that basically you are immune suppressing you are in suppressing the immune system and how the drugs happen and help in that so basically this you are talking antigen presenting cell here t cell here specific pathways are here uh, signal 1 signal 2 signal 3 signal 1 is nothing but uh, in terms of mhc proteins apc molecule a specific calcineurin is acting here you control that uh, another signal in terms of interleukin that is happening here in terms of the uh, a graft rejection process signal 3 you can control that using a using a chemical and also importantly there is a co stimulatory signal between uh, the t cell macrophages so you can control that also using analog molecules it's a kind of brief we will take it in interleukins more detail on that don't need to worry signal 1 2 3 nothing but a ternary complex the t helper cell talking to antigen presenting cell mhc molecule cd4 or t helper cell is talking to a b cell through whatever cd40 and cd40 uh, cd40 uh, markers right we have seen or antibody can act through b cell receptor also so basically you are trying to replace the normal connections with analogs this is a chemical called bila bilatacept that can analogously replace these chemical moieties by connections so you re remove this put this external so that there is no cross talk happening same way it uh, talks to the cd40 markers this inhibits the marker so that the cross talk will not happen same way nothing but t cells that recognize the graft antigen become activated graft is rejected basically so if you replace the I mean, with analogous molecule called ctl4 ig molecule analogous antigens a co stimulation process you take this yellow out you replace them with the green say that so graft rejection will not happen so this is the co stimulatory process you look into that in briefly concluding uh, we may not need that so you can stop in the stimulation here